Okay, gang, welcome back. Um, we're going to pick up in the story with our second glance today in chapter 5 of the Gospel of John. Um, now, this morning, we took a look at where Jesus healed a man who had been lame for like 38 years uh, who, outside of Jerusalem at the, at the Pool of Bethsaida. Um, but he did that on the Sabbath. And that creates a huge controversy. So the Jews are so mad at him for healing on the Sabbath. And Jesus' reply is this, my father is working until now, and so I am working. Well, if you thought they were mad that he was healing on the Sabbath, when Jesus says that, my, my, my father, not our father in general, but his personal father, meaning that God and he are father, son, that claim right there just throws the Jews' anger into absolute overdrive. Um, you know, the idea of Jesus working on the Sabbath uh, because his father is working is based on the idea that if God ever quits being God, the universe falls apart, right? It doesn't matter if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Uh, the universe is held together by the hands of God. So if God actually took a Sabbath, meaning if God actually stopped or ceased being God, if he didn't continually do the work of providence, if he didn't continually do the work of preservation, everything would fall apart. And so Jesus says, listen, before creation, my father worked. In creation, my father worked. In creation, my father is working. And if he stops, everything falls apart. Therefore, I must also keep working. And it's that statement where Jesus, one, claims to be divine, that if he stops working, the world ceases to be, and claims to be the son of God. Uh, that is just way too much for the Jews' heads. They essentially explode, and Jesus has to explain to them about his authority, which is where we're going to pick up for our second glance. Let me back off for a second and ask you a question. How can you hear God? I have never heard God audibly speak. Some folks say they have. I'm not putting that past them. But, but by and large, for most of us, we don't actually hear God. Is God silent? Of course not. God does speak. He speaks to us through his revelation, which is our scriptures. But in a greater and, and, and fuller way, he spoke to us. We heard him when we heard Jesus speak. And the idea behind that is rooted for John's gospel in the second half of chapter 5. When Jesus spoke, it was God's words. When Jesus acted, it was God's actions. When Jesus did anything, it was because he was doing the will of his Father. And so, if, if that's the case, if Jesus' words are God's words, if Jesus' actions are God's actions, then we have heard God when we've heard Jesus. We've seen God when we've seen Jesus. And, and that's the basic point that Jesus wants to explain to the Jews. You have seen God. You have heard God because you've seen me and you've heard me. Right, let's look at the text. Chapter 5. So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, that's that I mean, I mean again, right? Very, very. I say to you that the Son of God can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. Now, Jesus is using an image here of, of apprenticeship. Uh, you've heard of that, you know, if you want to be an electrician, you got to go through an apprenticeship. Um, we have doctors who have to become, uh, they, uh, they go through medical school and residency and internships and all that before they can become full-fledged, uh, uh, um, standalone doctor. Uh, we've got carpenters who take apprentices and, and they usually take somebody and, and show them how to do the skill or the art of, of what they specialize in. In the ancient Near East, in the time that John's writing this gospel, almost always an apprentice was a father-son relationship. You had some gifted craftsman who um, had these amazing skills, and because he loved his son so much, he showed his son how to do the very same things. And it's that image that Jesus wants us to see here. That God is this gifted artisan who has made this amazing creation. And that his son, whom he loves so much, Jesus, 
He is in him that he is showing him all things so that he can do and is doing it as well. Um, and, and so because of that, uh, there, Jesus says, you're going to see greater things. Listen to what he says. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing, and greater works than these will he show him, so that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. All right, so as, as this apprentice image, um, Jesus is saying, listen, my Father, my Father, gave me life. But not in the same sense that he, he gives others life. It says he gives him life in himself. In other words, if you have life within yourself, you don't need anything else to sustain you. One of the things that we talk about with God is that he is self-sustaining. It's why he says to Moses, I am who I am, or I, I will be what I will be. Um, uh, that great I am means that there's nothing that he can compare himself to, that he's self-sufficient, and he is life within himself. And that's the same phrase that he gives to Jesus here. In other words, Jesus is self-existing, self-sufficient. Jesus needs nothing else. Because he's fully God, he has life within himself. It's not granted to him. He's not, uh, he's not dependent upon anything for life. He is just like the I am, self-living, self self-sufficient. He has life within himself, which means he can give life to others. Uh, we'll see this demonstrated in Lazarus, who is dead. Um, that's a gift reserved only for God. Just as God the Father has the gift of life, so does his perfect apprentice, the Son, has the gift to give life. Uh, remember the story of Naaman? Uh, Naaman came to the king uh, be, to get his leprosy healed. And the king says, am I God? Can I grant who would live and who would die? Right? The Old Testament understood uh, that, that the gift of life and, and who gives life and, and who has life and who would die is all in God's hands. And Jesus is playing on that. And he's saying, listen, the greater things you're going to see, I've got the gift of life. Watch what I do with Lazarus. Watch in a greater way what happens when I die. Life, that life will not be taken from me, but I'll be resurrected. So he says, one, these greater things, one is life. Life in a way that, that, that only God has. And secondly, is the ability to judge. And he says, look, the Father's not going to judge anyone. The Father has given to me the ability to judge. And Jesus goes on in verse 28 then, and he explains, he says, listen, there's coming a day where everyone, everyone is going to be judged. Everyone is going to be judged, either judged to life or judged to death judged in our terms judged to heaven eternal life forever in the presence of God or judged forever separated from God hell what we like to say an eternal separation and torture and punishment away from from any kind of presence of God and Jesus makes a bold claim here he says actually I'm the one that's going to do the judging my father and I are of such tight accord of such the same will I do what he shows me I do what he sent me to do. I do what his will is. And so he's actually going to give me and has given me the authority to be the judge at the end of all of this. And one beautiful thing Jesus does in the middle of all this is he gives us an opportunity for justification. He says this. Truly, truly, I say to you, this is, this is verse uh, 24. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He who does not come into judgment but has passed from death to life. The question I started with, can you hear God? And, and Jesus makes a point to say, if you've heard my word, you've heard God. And in this, he brings it home for us. He says, I have the power of life and the power of judgment. And if you hear my word and you believe my word, 
the power to give you eternal life, and I will judge you as righteous. Gang, this is why it's so important for us to understand the full divinity of Jesus. Because it, it's, it's he in whom we have a relationship with God the Father through. It, it's Jesus who says, my words are God's words. So if you listen to my words and you believe my words, when you die, you'll live. If you, if you hear God's words through me and you trust me and you yield and you give your life and submit to me, I have the power to grant you eternal life. If you submit to me as Lord and Savior, if you hear my words and believe my words, when I judge you, I will judge you as righteous. I will judge you as those who trusted in God again like Adam couldn't do. I will judge you as those who are righteous. It is such a great thing that our Lord and Savior Jesus is God and that his words reflect and reveal the character of, of God to us. Oh, my friends, treasure them and value them meditate on them, read them, pray them, uh, immerse yourself in them. Because the very words of Jesus are the words of our God. They're the words of life and they are salvation for